This is VOA News. I'm Liz Pelka. U.S. President Donald Trump will soon leave for Vietnam for his second summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The president tweeting Monday morning, quote, with complete denuclearization, North Korea will rapidly become an economic powerhouse. Without it, just more of the same. He went on to say he expects Kim to make a wise decision after the meeting in the Vietnamese capital, Hanoi. The White House saying the main goal of the talks is the the denuclearization of North Korea. The two leaders met for the first time last June. Stock markets in China closed up more than 5 percent Monday. The markets rallying after President Trump announced he was postponing new tariffs on China because of what he said were substantial progress in trade talks between the world's two largest economies. The president had set a March 1st deadline to hike tariffs on $200 million in Chinese goods from 10 to 25 percent if there was no deal. Somali officials say al-Shabaab militants shot and killed nine civilians in a suburb of Mogadishu Monday. Officials say the militants attacked 11 civilians who were cleaning the streets in the Laful suburb. Laful is about 20 kilometers west of Mogadishu. The regional governor told VOA Somali that six women and three men were killed by the militants. The other two workers were injured in the attack. Some polls remained open Sunday in Nigeria as vote counting began in a presidential election that seemed too close to call. Meanwhile, the death toll in election-related violence rose to at least 39. Nigeria's Independent National Electoral Commission said it will reschedule the elections in some parts of Lagos, Rivers, and Anambra. This is VOA News. Preliminary results of Senegal's presidential election could come as early as Monday or Tuesday, according to the CENA. Vote counting has begun Sunday after a peaceful day of voting. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the U.S. is looking for ways to get humanitarian assistance into Venezuela. This after troops loyal to disputed President Nicolas Maduro repelled aid trucks in clashes at the borders with Brazil and Colombia. Colombia. In an interview on CNN Sunday, the top U.S. diplomat said the United States would consider imposing more sanctions against the Venezuelan government to increase pressure on Maduro to quit. In favor of the country's interim president, Juan Guaido, the president of the National Assembly. Guaido is considered by the U.S. and dozens of other countries as a legitimate leader in Caracas. Maduro has blocked the aid effort spearheaded by the U.S., saying it is a pretext for an armed U.S. invasion. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence is en route to Bogota, Colombia. He's scheduled to meet Guaido and deliver a speech to the Lima Group on the growing crisis in Venezuela. The Afghan Taliban are hoping for clear and fruitful results out of the current round of negotiations with U.S. officials in Doha. Those started on Monday morning. That's according to the spokesman for the Taliban team. He added that the discussion was supposed to revolve around the same two issues that both sides have recognized as the core issues in ending the 17-year conflict, withdrawal of foreign forces from Afghanistan, and ensuring that Afghan soil is not used by any terrorist group or individual for attacks against America and its allies. Afghanistan has started shipping goods to India for the first time through a newly developed Iranian seaport. It's a bid to improve exports and reduce reliance on routes through its uneasy neighbor, Pakistan. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani traveled Sunday to the western border city of Zaranj to see off the inaugural convoy of 23 trucks loaded with 570 tons of cargo to the Chabahar port in neighboring Iran. The consignment is destined for the Indian port city of Mumbai. Pope Francis's powerful condemnation of child sex abuse by priests has failed to impress some of its victims, one victim calling the Pope's words pastoral blah blah. Francis closed a Vatican conference on child sex abuse Sunday by comparing pedophilia to human sacrifice and calling guilty priests tools of Satan. More on VOANews.com.